Here we go then, Gavin, and uh, thank you for joining us at Presenter Academy, young man, and um, welcome to our little, um, our Academy of TV and Radio Personages. Now, you're slightly different in a way, aren't you, because you probably got... Very different, yeah, you, generally. Yeah, you got, you got a face that people will go, well, I haven't seen him on the telly, and then and you've got this voice which people will go, well, hold on, maybe I have heard him, but perhaps not even on the radio. So tell us exactly what you do and, and how you fit into the presenting category. Well, I am technically I am freelance, so I don't work for uh, one person or company. But I do a lot of television continuity announcing, so that's the guy who talks between the programs. So I do that on BBC Three, I do that on Discovery, Discovery Science, and of course, probably my biggest gig, BBC India. That's uh, that's that's sort of like my portfolio of announcing. I do other stuff around that in the. Uh, 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 you know, mixed world we live in now in media, but that is that they are sort of like my main gigs in continuity land. Okay, so did you get this job of speaking on the television and, and presenting? Because you are you are presenting programs, aren't you? You're presenting what the program will be. I yeah. mean, did you get this job from being on the radio originally? Um, in a in a funny about way, yeah, kind of. I because uh, as you know, I started out in radio and like most people of my generation you know helping out a local radio station and then went on to some bigger radio stations but had some sort of like you know mini midlife crisis when I was about 20 and realized it was telly I wanted to work in and went to work at a, a tv channel in a production role uh, which was channel five at, at, at milkshake in children's programs and uh yeah was I yeah I think I'd start then I'd started to this was a few years later, and I started to do a weekend show on Southern FM in Brighton at that point. So I was back on the radio then. Um, and one day, uh, in the Milkshake studio, which we shared with the continuity announcer studio at Channel 5, it was a big studio, so you had Milkshake down one end, and the continuity announcer's area with the microphone and a little a desk down the other. So we shared that, and laying around in the studio was a, uh, it was called the Five Continuity Announcers Handbook. And it was just everything about how you'd be a continuity announcer. And I thought, well, that might make interesting reading on the tube. So um, I photocopied that and had a little read on the tube of this and went through it and thought, oh, it's quite interesting. And then I got to the back page and I saw the shifts rate and I thought, ah, oh, this is actually very interesting. Um, so I went, I, I emailed the head of presentation at the time at five, because um, we were five then, not Channel 5. Um, and we had a chat. And I was basically told there's no chance of me being a continuity announcer whatsoever because Five is a terrestrial channel, I've not got any experience, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, oh, right, okay. Uh, but then at the end of the, the chat, David said to me, but, oh, I, um, I noticed you've done some script writing. And this came from working at the radio years ago where, because obviously it was a small local station and it worked like that back then and still does today, you know, as well as being on air, I also was in charge of making the... Um, stations commercials so with that there was a lot of script work so he picked up on that and he just said oh we've we've got this really interesting project at the moment where because we've got the soaps home and away and family affairs um and different announcers on different night they can't keep up with the plots etc so i need some one person to basically once a week watch all of home and away or family affairs and write script, I know, and write scripts between between the hour so the announcers will be reading your script. So it sounds like we're really on the ball. So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. So I, I, I did that for literally a few months. And David got promoted and I was working with a lady called Sarah, who then moved up to head of press. Um, and they really liked my scripts. And that was going really well. And then she said to me, look, I know you do the radio and we really like your scripts. And we've got a bit of a problem on Saturday because we've got a load of youth programs all, all day and our voices don't match. And she said, I'm not guaranteeing anything will happen. It's just a crazy idea I've had, but we may be wondering if, you know, you'd like to announce on the Saturday, if we give you some training and see how it goes. And then I just said, oh, it's really funny you say that actually, because I knocked you up a demo last week and here it is and gave it a CD. And that was it really. So it, it came about through the script work really, which, which I don't, think people realize is the most i think the most important part of the job of being a continent announcer. interesting yeah that's that's good have you got the sorry just to one sec have you got it on your knee because it's wobbling a little bit 
Is it on your knee or is it on the table? It's me leaning on the table, sorry. Oh, okay, that's cool. No, it's just that I don't want people to get seasick watching you because it's very interesting, so that's cool. Thanks, mate. Uh, we'll carry on now, cut that bit out. Um, okay, interesting stuff, Gavin. So, will you, for your job, perhaps be on the train and be writing a script and getting ready for something that you're going to announce on the telly? Yeah, I I can. But yeah, I write my scripts on the train. I If I'm on a... Because BBC Three is a mixture of live and pre-recorded shifts. So if I'm pre-recording, yeah, I could do. Or at home, like for instance, I'm on, I'm on tonight. And we get in at four, our shift starts on air at seven. So it, it's easy to self-contain everything within that. But if I've got a bit of downtime this morning. I might watch the new programmes and, uh, and, and maybe do a bit of writing at home. So it's, it's quite flexible like that. Isn't this a dream job for somebody watching this? They get paid to watch a bit of telly and then write something funny about the show they've seen and then speak about it between the programmes. I mean, this is a doddle, isn't it? Uh, it I'm, I'm very, very lucky and privileged to be able to do this. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, can, it can get hard. It's, um, you know, when you think of the other channels I'm on as well and, you know, Discovery Science, which I write for, that's quite, that's a lot of writing, you know, and... Like on a Thursday at Discovery, I'll be uh, right, let's do some maths. What's what's twenty five plus about thirty five forty times four? So that's uh, eighty hundred and twenty. So that's one hundred and sixty links I'll be recording for Discovery, and then I'll probably be doing another ninety for Discovery Science. <laughs> so that's basically it's a lot. So like in a session, I'll probably be doing something like I could be doing like two hundred and thirty, two hundred and forty links of which I've written ninety to a hundred of them so it can get if I was never good at homework at school not at all um you know always left it to the last minute and I've noticed as an adult sometimes that does work with my scripting work <laughs> as well how do you how do you decide what to write and what boundaries do you have as to what you write do you ever feel like well I've written this I think it's great but I might be going a bit over the edge here am I getting in trouble for it um well BBC3 is amazing although you have the the uh, the, the stricter parameters of the BBC, you do, it is BBC Three and it's a, it's a channel aimed at a younger audience and they're very, very much aware of that. Um, so we have, we have a play out editor who, who is the man or lady in charge of the entire BBC output when they're on that shift. So that's one, two, three, four, CBBC, BBC, they're in charge of that. Um, so everything I write gets vetted by them. Um, I mean, I've been compliance trained, legal trained, blah, 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 but they, so are they an um, nth degree, so they will vet everything, so even when I read out tweets or Facebook comments on a live shift, uh, which I have literally just picked up minutes before, although it sounds like I'm off the cuff and, you know, just, just as if I've seen them on the screen, that has actually been approved by the player editor as well, so I've got that acted, uh, I've got that extra barrier of protection. Okay, can you do a little voice for us now so people could close their eyes and think, oh, I do know him. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. I was on a late last night and it's early this morning, so um, what can I say? Um, coming up next on BBC Three, it's the Family Guy double where Peter gets involved in a fishing boat disaster. Like it, like it. That makes me want to watch now. I need to protest it to sound a bit more good. No, that's good. So I notice you're drinking a lot of water as well. This is quite an important thing to if you're going to you know, keep your voice strong, isn't it? If you're doing voice after voice. Uh, yeah, maybe. I would have a cup of tea on the go, but because, as I said, I was on a late last night and early, I haven't had time to make me a cup of tea yet, so it would normally be a good cup of tea. Yeah, I do. yeah, I know. I'm very jealous. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nice mug, Pat. Good taste. Thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm not very too, yeah, I'm not too great on that, if I'm honest. I, um, I worry about it when it goes wrong, um, but I don't. Sanderson's is amazing. If there's anyone as a singer or a voice person, if you lose your voice, you get something called Sanderson's. It's amazing. You can you have to ask for it. The chemist, not all chemists do it, but that that can be your saviour. So, what would you do if you're in the middle of a live piece of voice work on the television, yeah. and the red lights on, and you know there's a lot of people watching, and you suddenly feel a cough coming on or something? How do you deal with that? Have you ever had to go? <coughs> excuse me. Um. Oh, good question. In the old days, you used to have a cough button. Did you ever have that on the radio, cough button? No, but I've heard about it. Yeah, it's a button which just mutes what you're doing, and then you go, <clears throat> and then you let it off and carry on. Yeah? yeah, it just kills the mic. And I think I think they might still have that in the BBC One and BBC Two studios. I'll have to check. Um, the great thing with a channel like 
three, and I'm trying to think of some other like like oh, if that was ITV two or E four or something, he could just get away with it. Do you know what I mean? And just and just roll with it, and you know, make a thing of it and put a funny on air. So that's the good thing about channels like that because they're a little bit different than saying next on BBC two, which mm. is more sort of uh, straight laced, isn't it? Yeah, I just think I just think it's more real and more conversational without without, and hopefully I don't sound in like I'm putting on a fake conversation, if that makes sense. I, I do view BBC Three, actually, and I've said this to my bosses, as a radio show in some, in some respects. Um, and we are, you know, if you look at BBC's other youth arm in Radioland, that'd be Radio One. So I'm not saying BBC Three is like Radio One at all, but I do, I do view our job between the programmes is it, similar to that of a radio presenter for, for a similar audience. Now, that's really interesting that you say that because obviously this Presenter Academy is all about people who want to get into radio and television. So in a way, you are pretty much doing both. You're doing radio on the television. This is amazing. Yeah, it, it, I, I do view it as that. It's, it's, it's really strange because there's all different ways you can look at continuity and it depends what ways you do it. So, for instance, my BBC India gig is basically just sitting in a studio once a month with a shed load of scripts and just reading them out. So that could be done just by a VO artist. Um, and to be honest, the, the days of just being a VO, I believe, are, are on their way out because you see the people doing voiceovers now and it'll be from anyone from actors to celebrities to radio broadcasters, um, so that so, so that's that bit of it. Whereas if you are writing your own scripts at, and even more involved, if you're you're sitting on a shift doing it live, where it's more about not just uh, what you're saying, but being in an operational environment and be able to read a schedule and understand what's going on, and maybe having a bit more technical and and um, transmission based knowledge. It um, then it becomes a whole different job. So if you take my BBC India gig, which is from just sitting in a studio reading some scripts that someone else has written to my live stuff I do on BBC Three, they're actually worlds apart, although technically they are the same job. Have you ever been recognised from your voice where someone said, oh, don't I know your voice when you've been buying, like, cream buns in Greg's or something? Because <laughs> I do that every day, Pat. I go what? down to my local bakers and buy cream buns. Um, yeah, I have, actually, I think. Um, I have on, th- have on three, or, like, or if you're at a work meeting or... You know, someone goes, oh, this is Gavin, he's the announcer. Like, oh, yeah, 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 I can tell you, I get that now, I get that now. So that, that's a more realistic outcome you get. Is that, an, is that an odd feeling, or how do you deal with that? Get used to it, yeah, for a while, but it is a bit, it is a bit strange, yeah. Um, but, it's, yeah, it's quite normal now. 